And then after PayPal, then, I mean, to some degree, you know, the, especially us in Silicon Valley, we kind of understand the internet. We, we know people. I mean, yeah. PayPal is obviously of a scale that, um, you know, is, is noteworthy. But then SpaceX just seems really, you know, like, how, how, well, one, how, how did you decide that I'm definitely going to do that? And then, like, what's the first thing that you do? Like, how, how do you even, like, go out? Like, I, I don't even know how to start trying to make a rocket company. Um, well, neither did I, really. Um, the, and in fact, the first three launches failed. So it's not as though it was like, you know, spot on. <laughs> it's like, but, <laughs> did not hit the bullseye. <laughs> but, e but even getting the point that you're launching um, rockets, I don't even know how to, like, how do you get there? And uh, like, what did you do on, like, one, how did you decide? And then what did you do on day one? Like, who did you call? Or did you write a plan? Did you start? I, 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 don't, um, I don't even know. Yeah, actually, I mean, the, the origin of PayPal um, is, or rather uh, SpaceX is, is that um, uh, I was trying to figure out why uh, that we had not sent any people to Mars. Because the obvious next step after, after Apollo was to send people to Mars. So, but, but what ac in fact happened was that we sent a few people to the moon, and then we didn't send anyone after that to the moon or Mars or anything. Um, but if you'd asked people in 1969, what would 2013 look like? They would, they would have said there'll be a base on the moon, there would be, we would have at least sent some people to Mars, and maybe there'd even be a base on Mars. There'd yeah. be like orbiting space hotels, yeah. and there'd be all this awesome stuff in space. Yeah. And, and, and that's what people expected. Yeah. Um, and if you'd said, well, actually, the United States in 2013 will not be able to send anyone to orbit. But I'll tell you what will exist is that there'll be this device in your, in your pocket that's like the size of it, it's more than a deck of cards, that has access to all the world's information, and you can talk to anyone on planet Earth. Yeah. Um, and even if you're like, in you know, some remote village somewhere, as long as there's something called the internet, they wouldn't know what that means, of yeah. course, um, then you would ha you'd be able to communicate to anyone instantly and have access to, to all of hu humanity's knowledge. So like, bullshit, there's right. no way that that's going to be <laughs> Right, true. right, right. Um, and yet we all have that, and, uh, and, and space is not happening. So I tried to figure out like, what was the deal here. And this was like, 2001. It was just a friend of mine asked me, what am I going to do after PayPal? I said, well, you know, I've always been interested in space, but I don't think there's anything that an individual could do in space because it's the province of government, exactly. and usually large government. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm curious as to when we're going to send someone to Mars. So I went to the NASA website, tried to figure out, like, where's the place that tells you that? And I couldn't find that. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, like, either I'm like, bad at looking at the website or they have a terrible website because surely there must be a that, date. That should be a big date, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it should yeah. be like, you know, this, is the, this, is the, this yeah. should be on the front page. And then I discovered actually that uh, NASA had no plans to send people to Mars. And or even really back to the moon. Yeah. Um, so this, so uh, this was really disappointing. I, th I thought, well, maybe this is a question of uh, uh, national will. Like, have have w do we do we need to get people excited about space again, and and try to get NASA a bigger budget, and then that then then we would send people to Mars. And, and so I uh, started researching the area. Um, becoming more familiar with space, reading lots of books, and uh, came up with this idea to do something called Mars Oasis, which was to send a small greenhouse uh, it was seeds in dehydrated gel. That land, upon landing, you hydrate the gel. You have green plants on a red background. And the, the, public, is, uh, the public responds to precedents and superlatives. Mm. Yeah. So it's the, f the first life on Mars, the furthest that life's ever traveled, mm. and you'd have this money shot of green plants on a red background. Yeah. So yeah. That, 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 that seemed like it would get people pretty excited. Um, so that, that I, I started getting into this and, and trying to figure out, okay, well, can I f afford to build the spacecraft? Because uh, I, I had some money from as a result of PayPal, yeah. but it had to fit within that budget. And I figured we had to do two missions because if we, uh, if we only did one and it failed, then it might have like the opposite effect. But you were uh, willing to bet the farm, so to speak, on this. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I figured like I, would, I was willing to spend half the money that I got from yeah. PayPal yeah. Um, with no expectation of return. Right. Um, because I thought this was just something that was pretty important. And uh, yeah, I'm like, it seemed like I could spend half the money on main of PayPal on this. And there'd be, if, if that got NASA a bigger budget and resulted in us going to Mars, that would be a good, pretty good outcome. And um, when your friends came or your family came up to you and said, look, you know, there's nations that can't do this. You know, you're, you're a guy, but you have yeah. some resources. What did you say or do or think? Well, so th um, I, I had a lot of friends of mine try to talk me out of starting a rocket company because they thought it was crazy. And <laughs> what, 
friend of mine made me watch a video of rockets blowing up. <laughs> uh, and you know, there were just lots of people that thought it was a really crazy idea. And there were some people that had tried to start rocket companies, not succeeded. And they, they tried to talk me out of it. And, um, but the thing is that the, the premise for talking me out of it was, well, we think you're going to lose the money that you invest. And I was like, well, right. um, that was my expectation anyway. Right. So I don't really mind if I lose. You know, I mean, I don't mind, but I mean, it's, it's not. It's not like I was trying to figure out the rank ordered best way to invest money, right. and on that basis, um, you know, chose space. Right. It's not like that's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought, wow. You weren't looking at like money, money market bonds, AAA bonds, right, exactly. rocket company. Like you weren't like do real yeah, estate. Yeah, yeah, I real, could, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, invest yeah. in shoemaking, anything. <laughs> um, and whoa, space is, is <laughs> highest ROI. Yeah, that, exactly. that's, that is not what I. That is yeah. not, not, it wasn't the premise. <laughs> um, I just thought that it was important that uh, humanity expand beyond Earth, and we weren't doing that, so maybe there was something I could do to kind of spur, spur that on. Um, and then I, um, I was able to compress the costs of the spacecraft and everything down to a relatively manageable number, and I got stuck on the rocket. The, the US rockets were way too expensive. I ended up going to Russia, flew to Russia three times to negotiate purchase of a, an ICBM. That, I tried to buy two of the biggest ICBMs in the Russian fleet in 2001 and 2002. Um, and I actually ne negotiated I'll price. just let that statement stand. I'm not even yeah. going to. Um, I, I, I mean, that's uh, and, 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 uh, Well, I, I, that's actually, I, I actually have to, like, who did you call? Like, <laughs> like no, I, I mean, I, I, I this You open is, the I'm, yellow pages. Yeah, yeah. You know, go to I'm ICBMs. in the market. Like, oh. I mean, how does this? I mean, I don't want to get too much in the way, but I am curious, just this one particular thing. You, are, you decide at some point you need to buy an ICBM. Yeah. Well, actually, at first I tried to buy just a normal ro launch vehicle that they used to launch satellites. But right. Those were too expensive. I, I see. Yeah. I see. Um, the, the, the Boeing Delta II would have cost $65 million right. each, and so two would have been 130 and then I was like, whoa, okay, that breaks my budget right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and I tried to negotiate with them, and that was not. That How much not does an ICBM go for? I'm curious, what's the market rate for one of those? Um, well, this was right after the fall. It might have gone up. Yeah, yeah. It, it's gone up a lot since right. then. Uh, right. But in, in 2001, it, it would have been about $10 million each. For, for, so two would have yeah. been 20. And, and then, um, and then I, I thought I could get the rest of the mission down to also around 10 per. So, it, so we'd have. A, a dual mission with like two identical launches, two identical spacecraft, and um, you know, for like roughly forty million dollars, and so I thought that okay, I'll, I can do that. And but you must have had some like you know rocket scientists advising you at this point. I mean, this sounds like you're serious. I mean, you were yeah, yeah, and it engaged a, a, a bunch of sort of consultants, right, and, right, and I kind of started to get, to get familiar with the space industry, I and. But then after the third trip to Russia, I, I, I can't realize that I was actually wrong about um, that on, on my first premise, that, that there was a lack of will. In fact, I think that there's a tremendous amount of will in the United States for uh, space exploration. Because um, the United States is essentially a nation of explorers. Right. I mean, it's a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. Um, so of course, um, it was quite silly of me to think that, th that, that, that people lack motivation. But what people don't want to think is that, OK, um, Going to sending people to Mars is going to be so expensive that they'll have to give up like healthcare or something. Right, yeah, they're right. not going to do that. Um, so it's got to be, they got, it's, it's got to be that going to Mars is not going to cause some meaningful d drop in their standard of living. Right. You know, right. So if it's like maybe a quarter of a percent or half a percent of GDP, something like that is palatable. Right. Um, anyway, so so, so 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 I thought, okay, it's not really going to maybe matter that much if I do this mission because. What really matters is is having a uh, a way. So so I was wrong. I, I I thought I thought I thought there was there wasn't enough will, but there actually was, was plenty of will if people thought there was a way. So so then I said, okay, well I need to work on the way. Yeah. Um, how hard is it really to make a rocket? In history, historically, all rockets have been expensive. So therefore, right. in the future, mm. all rockets will be expensive. But actually, it's not, that's not true. If you say, what is a rocket made of, and say, okay, it's made of Aluminum, titanium, some copper, um, carbon fiber. If you want to go that direction, um, and and you can break down and say what is, what is the raw material cost of all these components? And if you have them stacked on the floor and could wave a magic wand, um, so that the cost of rearranging the atoms mm. was zero, 
um, then what would the cost of the rocket be? Yeah. And I was like, wow, okay, it's really small. It's like, you know, two percent of what a rocket right. costs. Right. So clearly, be in how the atoms are arranged. Right. The 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 other so so you got to figure out sort of okay, how can we get the atoms in the right shape um, f much more e efficiently? Yeah. And um, so that had a series of, of meetings on Saturdays with people that were some of whom were, were still working at the big aerospace companies, just to try to figure out is there some catch here that I'm not, that I'm not yeah, appreciating? Yeah. And I couldn't figure out. There didn't seem to be any catch, so started SpaceX. And and you and you ended up building. I mean, you, you had some failures, but obviously some huge successes. Yeah. What was the cost that you were able to build this rocket for relative to wh what they were being built for before? So, so let's see. The, for, for the Falcon One which is the first rocket we built, and the first three flights did not make it. In fact, um, yeah, I mean, we got, we got sort of progressively f further, but um, like the first rocket like came and cra landed maybe a couple hundred yards away from yeah. the launch site and you know, tiny fragments. Um, so uh, yeah, um, anyway, that, that, that rocket ended up costing uh, around $6 million. Wow. Um, compared to other rockets in that class, which were about, say, $25 million. Wow, so significant. Yeah, it'd be like a quarter. Wow, wow. Um, and, but, but, but there's an even better step beyond that, which is to make rockets reusable. Yeah. Um, so but right now, our, that, that is around, around what, what our comparison price is, excluding the re refurbished ICBMs. Yeah. So if you say, building a rocket from new, how does the SpaceX rocket compare to a rocket from Boeing or Lockheed, it's about a quarter of the price. Mm. Um, um, however, if we make it reusable, then it can be uh, two orders of magnitude cheaper. Two orders of magnitude cheaper, well, one hundredth the price. That's right. So, so w I mean, and, to, and I've for seen... You. For you. Yeah, for only, for <laughs> only today, we have Memorial Day <laughs> sale. Uh, what, 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 uh, and I've seen some, I mean, you are doing like these vertical landings? Yeah. Like, like literally out of like the yeah. 1950s, like, like sci-fi movies, yep. and that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But essentially, the rocket needs to come back and land at the launch site, and then um, reload propellant, take off again, like, uh, an, like an airplane. And how uh, far I do mean, you think we are from that? Like, when, when do you think, like, you know, your best guess, is when we'll, we'll actually well, see that happening? I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful we can do it next year. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's. Um, we got we got some ambitious stuff at Khan Academy for the yeah. next year too, so we can <laughs> compare. Um, We're redesigning the site, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we've been working on it for a long time. I, yeah. I should say, yeah. it, SpaceX has been around for 11 years, and thus far we have not recovered any rockets. We've recovered the spacecraft yeah. uh, from orbit, so that 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 was great. Um, but none of our attempts to recover the rocket stages have been successful. Yeah. Um, the rocket stages have always blown up, basically yeah. on reentry. Yeah. Now we think we've we think we figured out why that that was the case, um, and it, it's a tricky thing because Earth's gravity is really quite strong um, and with uh, advanced, an advanced rocket you can do maybe two to three percent of your liftoff mass to orbit um, typically and then reusability subtracts two to three percent because you have to uh, yeah. yeah so then you can like nothing to orbit or negative right and, and that's obviously not helpful um, <laughs> and uh, so the, the trick is to try to shift that from say two to three percent in, in an expendable configuration, mm -hmm. put to, to make the rocket um, mass efficiency, engine efficiency, and so forth, so much better that it, it moves to around maybe three and a half to four mm. percent in an expendable configuration, and then try to get clever about the reusability elements tr and try to drop that to around the two one and a half to yeah. two percent level. So you have a net payload to orbit of about two percent. But you're doing it at one at two orders of magnitude cheaper. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, so. I, our Falcon 9 rocket costs about yeah. $60 million, but the propellant uh, cost, which is mostly, mostly oxygen, as two-thirds oxygen, one-third one fuel, um, is only about $200,000. Wow. Um, and it's much like a, like a 747. It costs yeah. about as much to uh, refuel our rocket as it does to refuel 747, you know, within... Yeah, pull pretty close, essentially. So, so what happened, I mean, if, assuming y'all are successful and you all have proven yourself to be you know, successful on kind of these audacious things in the past, I mean, what happens? I mean, that seems like it's, it, I mean, what happens in the next five, ten years in the space industry if y'all are successful there? Uh, 
I mean, do we get to Mars? Do we, is, do we have kind of uh, market forces, commercialization of space starting to happen? Yeah. <coughs> um, let's see. Well, the, the first step is that we need to earn enough money to keep going as a company. So we have to make sure that we're launching satellites, uh, you know, commercial satellites like um, uh, broadcast communications, yeah. mapping, um, and the government satellites that do scientific missions, uh, Earth-based or, sci or, or space-based missions, GPS satellites, that kind of thing. Um, and, and then also servicing the space station, tr transferring cargo to and from the space station, which we've done a few times, and, and then taking people to and from the space station. So, so we've, got to, we've got to service the sort of needs, um, Earth-based needs to launch satellites, and that, that pays the bills. Yeah. But, but in doing that, keep improving the technology to the point where uh, we, we can make full reusability work and we have sufficient scale and sophistication to be able to take people to Mars. Wow. And so you think this is going to be a reality? In what, 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 what's your best guess of when we're going to have someone on Mars? I think, I think probably about 12 years. That 12, that's, that's not take two years. And, and you think it'll be a round trip? It'll, it'll be, yeah. it'll, it won't just be a, <laughs> some type of permanent colony on, on Mars? Yeah, I, I think it's probably a round trip. Wow. <laughs> so, so for, for... I mean, it's not for sure. I, 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 could, I could talk about this for... But I mean, the our, people know I'm... So the aspiration will be around for... Yeah. yeah. No, this, 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 yeah, this is mind-blowing.